Welcome to Digital Transforming the Luxury Experience. From anticipating needs to delivering new touchless experiences for guests and associates. Our world has become digital. The global business world is digital. It's true of virtually any aspect of modern organizations, whether that's digital savvy customers or the importance of digital tools and systems in helping companies run more efficiently, effectively, and in a, and in a secure manner. And there's no industry better positioned to capitalize on the benefits of digital first processes than the travel and hospitality. This is true for all categories of hospitality, but especially applicable for the luxury brands of travel. In the past years, the industry has capitalized on a number of digital innovations to make travel more appealing to customers and business partners alike. But due to the outbreak of COVID-19, the need for smart digital transformation strategies is no longer a nice to have, it's essential. As one of the leaders in providing innovative technology and services to guest-centric properties, World Cinema understands this and has introduced a variety of contactless offerings to our 4,200 properties across the United States. Not only helping them to uh, uh, prepare for the challenges of today, but also deliver the opportunities of the future. Innovative contactless technology and entertainment solutions are imperative to deliver a safe guest experience and ultimately help hotels digitally transform their property and maximize revenue opportunities. A recent example of this includes World Cinema's recently announced Mobile Web Remote, a contactless solution for hotel guests that puts their personal devices in control without having to touch the hotel television remote. Guests can simply scan, connect to uh, access Worldview in-room entertainment systems, access room service directly from their personal devices, as well as many other customizable services. Technology innovation is the number one growth driver in our industry. And this is exciting for the entire hospitality ecosystem. From technology providers to the actual properties and owners, to the luxury brands represented today, and of course, to guests and to luxury consumers. Digitally transforming the luxury experiences is our, is our exciting topic of conversation today with this, with this distinguished panel of, of speakers. So I'm honored to uh, introduce the following panelists. Um, today we have Nelson Garrido. He's the Senior VP of Information Technology uh, and Hospitality at Brooks Department. We have Neil John Schrader, a global brand head of Conrad Hotels and Resorts and the Vice President of Luxury and Lifestyle for the Asia Pacific uh, at Hilton. Uh, Vishal Patel, Director of Wellness Research at Sensei. And Monica, Monica uh, Nerger, global, uh, Group Global CIO at Mandarin Orient. So as we begin our conversation, uh, I'd like each of you to tell us a little bit about your company and the roles that you play. Uh, Nelson, we'll start with you. Sure, uh, Nelson Garrido, uh, Senior VP of IT for uh, Brookfield Properties uh, on the hospitality side. Uh, our company is an owner. We own about 328 hotels globally. We own independent hotels to uh, uh, to a luxury brand in in India, uh, and we are predominantly just the owner side. And we we usually hire either brands or third parties to manage our hotels. Thank you, uh, Nils. Good morning from Singapore. Um, Nils Anderschroder, and I'm the global head for Conrad Hotels and Resorts, um, and at the same time the vice president for all luxury lifestyle for Hilton here in Asia Pacific. Um, we have around um, 75 hotels on luxury um, brands of Waldorf Astoria, Conrad Hotels and Resorts and Alex are operating around the globe and of course a numerous number of new um, hotels in the pipeline. So very thrilled to be with you today and, um, and really be on this topic which is actually really on, on the heart of our mind. Thank you. Yes, we're glad to have you. Uh, Vishal. Thanks, Bob. Vishal Patel. I'm Director of Wellness Research at Sensei. 
Uh, Sensei was founded by Larry Ellison and Dr. David Agus, who both share a passion for delivering wellness and helping people live healthier lives. Uh, we launched our first property in 2019 in partnership with the Four Seasons off of Maui. The, the property is called Sensei Lanai. And uh, my role at Sensei is really to ensure that we take an evidence-based approach. So I work on knowledge curation, and I also oversee our efforts to use data as a means of creating meaningful, transformative experiences for our guests. All right, that sounds amazing. And last but definitely not least, Monica. Thank you, Bob. I am the Global Chief Information Officer for Mandarin Oriental Hotel Group. As many of you may know, we're headquartered in Hong Kong. We have 33 hotels and seven residences in 23 different countries, so fairly geographically diverse. And we recently announced an alliance with Oberoi Hotels uh, based out of India, which gives the broader base of uh, guest experience and opportunity for both our customers, as well as keeping a strong pipeline in place. So my team and I are responsible for all aspects of technology across the brand, everything from cybersecurity to digital transformation. And I'm quite delighted to be here with all of you today. All right, thank you very much. So we'll get started today um, with, with you, Nelson. Um, uh, I, uh, one of the buzzwords in digital transformation, especially in the hospitality space, is this word contact. And um, I'd love to understand, um, can you tell us a little about, a bit about the contactless technologies, um, which you think are acceptable in a luxury hospitality environment um, and how they relate to the guest experience specifically? Sure, we've actually started uh, 20, 2020 uh, with a lot of initiatives on the contactless side, more from a customer service side. Uh, we're deploy we were starting to deploy out mobile key, mobile check-in, uh, mobile ordering for many of the restaurants, especially for our resorts that have uh, large pools uh, and, and large uh, food and beverage operations. Uh, and that in turn, you know, uh, with the pandemic, uh, we've stepped up our, our, uh, our, our programs there to, to really push this out to all of our independents. Uh, uh, to have that capability, even in the luxury side, uh, uh, even though we're not cutting back on on labor where where it's appropriate, uh, we want to offer the guest uh, the choice. Do they do they want to uh, be able to check in at, at the desk or check in by themselves uh, and get their key electronically? Uh, so our our mantra and our, on our full service and luxury side is to be able to give the guest a choice of uh, of what they want to do. Uh, just like in uh, uh, in in room controls the same way and and in and in 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 room uh, controlling the TV for example or casting their own the, their own content uh, so it's a matter of giving the guests the, the choice uh, of how they want to uh, how to how they want to interact uh, on our limited service side we that's kind of a given but on the luxury side uh, we wanted to be able to offer that choice whether the guest wants to use it or not yeah, that makes perfect sense. I know that, that, that Brookfield is also outside of hospitality and other venues like residential, multifamily, um, you name it. I think you have some assets there. Um, are you seeing similar uh, trends in those other assets? I know this is about luxury hospitality, but I'm interested in what you're seeing in the market just in general in the real estate market. Sure. Uh, one big uh, uh, real estate platform that we have is on the residential side. So we have a whole group that builds uh, single family homes and luxury homes uh, throughout the U.S. And the one thing that they pivoted to was a lot of the, the uh, uh, self, uh, self-guided self tour, self-review uh, 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 and self-guides uh, uh, of, the, of all the, the, the homes that are available so that the, the client was enabled to uh, doesn't need to have to have a, a real estate agent or a or a guide to be able to go through the home. So they implemented some technology to to do that. In our office space, we have a lot of uh, uh, contactless that's been uh, put in place as well uh, for elevator calling uh, and for accessing the the different suites for for all of our tenants. Uh, on the retail side, the same. Uh, they actually put out some apps in terms of you know knowing what kind of crowds are in the malls. Um, so that people can choose when when to go when it's less crowded. Okay, that's interesting. All right, great. 
Um, Nils, I'd love to understand um, what initiatives you've seen or what you've put in place to make your guests feel uh, uh, safer or just improve the guest experience overall. Thank you, Bob. Um, clearly, the well-being of um, our guests as well as our team members around the globe is our um, highest priority. And we, we take very much a big pride in maintaining the highest standards of cleanliness and hygiene. That was particularly important in the beginning of the pandemic. Um, we really learned a lot on our existing technology um, and leaned on this um, on the Hilton Honors app and the digital key, of course, to provide a seamless contactless ex guest experience. And as um, it was said before, it's about the experience and the choice of our guests um, nowadays, um, if they would like to be enjoying this um, digital key and seamless experience, or they really would like the traditional um, experience of a lot of um, interaction with our team members. In addition, this year, of course, for all our luxury hotels of Waldorf Astoria, Conrad Hotels, and Alex R, we launched several new initiatives and adopted new protocols to adapt to the needs of our guests, of course. Hilton Clean Stay, um, an industry leading standard of cleanliness and disinfection, created in partnership with the maker of Lysol and Dettol, and of course, uh, monitored and assisted by the Mayo Clinic. It was in the first in the hospitality industry. And Hilton CleanStay was really and is a rigorous system that incorporates trusted know-how and scientific approach to cleaning practices and product offerings. So ultimately, I'm sure you have seen that the, the CleanStay seal is really something which made a huge impact for guests to see that they will enter the guest rooms and the meeting rooms they might attend. Um, that you know they, they feel that they are the first going into the room um, after the housekeeper literally left. Um, the second one was, of course, event ready, which is something, again, for our meeting attendees and for very much here in Asia Pacific, what we, we see already coming back, um, bigger meetings, bigger weddings, um, that we are re-evaluating what really group business and meetings and events will look like in the future. This will be and is a global leading um, cleanliness and customer service program. Something which we launched recently as well is Workspace by Hilton. Something really, but I think what is changing the customer demand um, that you know our hotels are used for kind of office space and workspaces um, for um, anyone who is wants to maybe escape the home office like we are sitting in at the moment um, and, and really enjoy the facilities of a hotel, either in the urban environment or, of course, in a resort environment. So we're taking really additional measures throughout every day. Um, and of course, we are always continue to be in consultation with all the authorities in all countries we're operating. And those are 100 countries and territories around the globe. Food and beverage is something as well. We continue to always adapt. We see countries where we're going back to the norm um, of literally offering breakfast buffet again, um, here, particularly here in China and Japan and in many other countries around the globe. So in conclusion, Bob, um, you know, the hospitality may look a bit different in, sh in the short term, but we're unwavering in our commitment of welcoming the guests safely as they return to travel around the globe. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, uh, Vishal, I'd like to, to shift to you. Um, uh, Sensei has two incredible founders um, from both the world of technology and of health or from health. And um, I'd like to understand, obviously you have a very experienced focused uh, destination or destinations. Uh, I'd like to understand how you're leveraging technology to fulfill on those promises, to create a very unique experience with wellness in mind. And I think this goes far beyond just the, the current pandemic, but also how you create differentiation and, and uh, an attractive destination in the future. But so I'd like to understand the technology play in that, that mission. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for the question, Bob. Um, you know, so as I mentioned, I think we really take inspiration from our founders, Larry Ellis and Dr. Agus. Um, you know, they have a passion for trying to bring wellness to the world. And I think, you know, wellness re retreats, purpose-driven retreats are taking on and have to take on a greater responsibility for their guests. Uh, you know, we're taking on responsibility for their physical health, their mental health, and sometimes even their spiritual health. And, um, you know, so in that sense, you know, technology has to really serve that aim. 
And so we're look, really looking for technology to be transformative, uh, not just supporting um, the experience, but really extending the experience. Uh, we're looking to apply technology to help guests learn more about themselves, uh, learn how to adopt healthier lifestyles, um, get better in touch with their bodies and, you know, emotions even. So, you know, a good example, I think, of this is technology that we actually use in our spa. So last year, uh, we introduced ther thermal body mapping into our spa. And so thermal body mapping literally takes a heat map of your body. And this technology, um, it's used by your massage therapists when they begin their tissue work. Uh, because the hot spots in the heat map tell you where you have increased areas of circulation or inflammation. And to our guests, we're able to show before and after photos. And so they see that at, you know, before the massage, they'll have some hot spots, some tense areas, some inflamed areas. They get the tissue work and that dissipates. So what we the feedback that we're getting from our guests is that this objective piece of data actually helps bridge this divide uh, between the technology, the data, you know, what the, what the technology is telling them about their bodies and their subjective experience. You know, we all know that when we can sometimes be kind of stuck in our own heads, uh, going to these retreats, going to our properties actually helps guests get out of their own heads and kind of connect with their bodies and kind of be, be, be more present. And what we found in the wellness world is that is really the quintessential ingredient for, for someone to become more well, to be, live a healthier lifestyle and to adopt healthier behaviors. And so I think that this is, you know, you know, a harbinger of things to come, that technology doesn't simply have to be a distraction. Technology doesn't have to be a poor substitute for the human touch. Technology can actually help us uh, deliver more intimate experiences that help transform behaviors. And so that's how Sensei is approaching this problem. Yeah, that's, fasc that's fascinating. All right, um, Nils, uh, a similar question with a slightly different focus. Um, the, the workation staycation trend continues to blur the lines uh, between business and leisure. Um, how are Hilton's luxury brands addressing this trend and ensuring hotels have the infrastructure uh, to meet the needs of the always connected uh, traveler? Thank you, Bob. That's a great question. Um, guest expectations about travel have cost change and continue to change. So you are innovating to find always unique solution for today's challenges. Um, Hilton offers a um, unique solution for encouraging long-term work and play travel, but of course the alternatives um, uses for the target rooms and spaces for remote work and extended stay. Um, staycation is something, of course, which came up here, particularly in Asia Pacific, a few years ago, but has really intensified here um, in the last couple of months. I live in Singapore, Staycation is the only business um, anyone in any hotel at the moment currently have, except the quarantine business um, supported and booked by the government. However, a lot of luxury hotels, including ours, are really benefiting and literally we're sold out on certain weekends and public holidays. Other things, of, of course, of um, workspaces is the natural advantage of our luxury hotels it's that normally they lead them themselves to address this trend because some of our resort destinations are having a lot of open spaces. There are often fewer guests in the, in the same space, so there is much more a personalized experience. Offer the opportunities for people to indulge and spend more time away safely and with great care, that is really something which most hotels, in particular our luxury estate, is really looking um, and book, and that's why they get booked for. So we have a lot of examples, um, and particularly here in this part of the world, um, you know, what better place if you are actually barefoot under your desk um, and look into the Indian Ocean at one of our hotels in Maldives, or you are in Bora Bora in Koh Samui. Those are actually all villa products. Um, you know, it's literally, um, you know, safe distance um, by nature, so um, and social distancing by nature. So yeah, yeah actually, you feel really great. Um, we have many hotels, particularly in the Americas, of course, where we see our resorts in Mexico, our family, our Punta Mita, is booked by, for a work from paradise. So um, ultimately, a lot of our guests are coming there for a week or two and really put literally their office space the same as they have in their, in their home 
and build it up in, in, the, in their suite and their rooms overlooking the ocean and, and really combine the staycation as well as work creation um, together. So um, we see that, and uh, of course, they rely on the technology of our hotels. And normally our luxury hotels have the latest technology available for our guests doing exactly what we do today. Um, really be on, on, on a Zoom call, on MS Teams, and, and really do their job and, and their work the way they wanted it and like in their home office or in their real office. Okay, great. That's fantastic. Um, Monica, I would like to turn to you. Um, and then Nelson, I'll ask you the exact same question after Monica. Um, you know, the, the hotel industry has, of course, been seriously impacted by the pandemic um, uh, in, in many, many ways. But it, but it has given an opportunity for, uh, for, for hotel properties, individual properties on a select basis to sort of retool their technology infrastructure. Um, uh, if they can invest in the technology infrastructure, um, and you know, th this has given th th a lot of a lot of opportunities for, for uh, kind of rethinking their strategy and uh, and going after and redesigning the assets. Um, besides technology innovations like the the famous plexiglass dividers, which I think most luxury hoteliers would never want to even uh, use as a word or a true word phrase in in their guest experience. Um, how, uh, what have you seen in the world of, of innovation? Um, have you been surprised by the success or adversely the failure of any of the technologies or operational process changes um, which have occurred in the past six months to a year? Sure. Uh, I'll start with perhaps operational process changes because I think the industry has done a, a stellar job of adopting a lot of new processes around COVID-19. Uh, some of my colleagues have shared. We too at Mandarin Oriental launched the We Care program, a very considered uh, method of protecting our guests from a health and safety perspective through the lens of that customer journey, as well as our colleagues. Uh, I think Nelson mentioned earlier and also Nils, luxury is about choice and it's that getting that right blend of technology human interaction and services. And that's really the opportunity. So what I've seen is, you know, some things work better than others. Uh, I have seen less, less uh, likelihood of adopting remote check-in, for example, and probably because some of the complexities related to payments and uh, mobile key. But I was really surprised actually to see worldwide global adoption, literally from Hong Kong to Miami to Prague on QR codes. So this was a, a unanticipated uh, adoption of technology that allows the guests to look at wine menus, uh, lists and menus, uh, check out remotely. And, and that's been fairly steady in, in terms of how many guests use it. Uh, the other, of course, is the propensity for digital chat and more interaction with our colleagues digitally. Okay, excellent. Yes, I, I'm wondering uh, in the in the restaurant business of menu paper menus will ever make a return. Uh, everyone's using QR codes for this. Uh, Nelson, any any uh, successes, failures, surprises, areas of opportunity that you see? Uh, uh, people, uh, whether it's yourself or others, taken in this, uh, I'll call it a downtime. Well, we actually relaunched a hotel here in DC that uh, went through a, about a year renovation uh, and we we repivoted the the food and beverage. Uh, it was supposed to be kind of a more intimate uh, food and beverage uh, venue where uh, you know, it would have meant it would have been closed right now because it's, uh, uh, you know, too close for comfort uh, for the the pandemic, and we did we did deploy out uh, you know, a, a re image lobby where there's a lot more open spaces, uh, and uh, the 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 like. Monica mentioned the the use of uh, QR codes is is really uh, we thought was it was dead, and now it's it's used for everything. So that that restaurant's using it for. Uh, looking at uh, the wine menu, looking at the uh, the the food the food menu, ordering, calling your server to the table as well if you need to, um, 
so that uh, all those kind of contactless, but kind of your choice uh, technology. Uh, and on the cleaning side, uh, we're actually working at this hotel with uh, with a provider uh, to, to look at a, a UVC cleaning robot to, to use in public spaces and in guest rooms. Uh, and we have actually put one in the lobby uh, and guests will actually inquire a lot about it and what it does. Uh, so we're in the initial stages of, of putting that together. Um, but all about, you know, uh, the cleanliness and uh, keeping, keeping the guests safe. Okay, great, great. Uh, N Nils or Vishal, any, any, uh, any examples of technologies that are working, surprising you, um, uh, not working? Uh, yeah, I can, I can chime in briefly a little bit about, you know, some things that are working, not working at Sensei. You know, it's really, as a well-being company, uh, COVID has forced us to, you know, rethink what what fitness means on properties. Um, you know, uh, some of our properties, you know, we have more traditional gyms, and um, you know, it over the past few years, there've been a number of new kind of fitness movements, you know, popular among millennials that have sprung up, uh, like CrossFit, and uh, those kind of gyms have wide open spaces, and uh, you know, they don't have the pieces of like the circuit trainers that we typically had in our properties back in the day, and so it's I think it's forced an acceleration of new types of fitness models. We're, we're, we're using open spaces. We're using pieces of equipment that are more minimalist, that are easier to wipe down, um, and that are, um, you know, that are conducive to maintaining social distance between individuals. Okay, great, great. I'll have to reintroduce myself to fitness equipment. I'm not familiar with that concept. Um, <laughs> All right, um, let's move, uh, Nelson, let's, if we can, discuss in-room technologies, specifically in-room technologies. Of course, a topic that's very near and dear to my heart is uh, television uh, and the on-screen experience, but also smart room controls, audio systems, personalizations of the guest experience via in-room things like on, uh, putting the name of the piece on the television screen. Um, has your strategy or your tactics for your in-room technology changed in today's environment? And let's just go beyond just the pandemic, but just in general, uh, kind of where you see things uh, going in the future with in-room technologies. Sure, we we have been uh, in the process of uh, reinventing kind of what we were we were doing in the rooms. Uh, we, we have been putting in room in room controls, uh, mainly focused on the TV, so you can make all those changes to your HVAC, uh, your lighting, uh, you know, sound all through the TV and the TV remote. Uh, now we're pivoting in terms of uh, you know how can you do that on your mobile phone? So how how can you personalize that room using the in room technology and in room controls, but use it from your own mobile device? Uh, uh, so that's that's really the challenge is how how do we let the guests do what they want to do in the room, but being able them being able to use their own device instead of using, a, you know, a remote control. We have been uh, changing out remote controls in, in some hotels where you know this, the the uh, you know virus safe or bacteria safe remotes. Uh, but I think it's it it really needs to be, uh, you know, let the guests use what what they have, uh, just like we do with with content. Let them let them bring their own content in the room and cast it to the to the TV or personalize the content. On the TV for them. Uh, but the real challenge is how do we how do we bring that technology uh, and that personalization for them for the guests to use their own device uh, wherever they go uh, in the hotel uh, to control sound, to control lighting, control HVAC, ordering, room service, and even ser uh, service requests uh, to communicate back to the to the staff. Okay, great, great, um, Monica. Um, I, I think we'd all agree that uh, personalizing the guest experience has value. Um, uh, I think individuals like to be recognized as, their, as individuals, and their experiences are all slightly different. Um, my question, though, is at what level does personalization become questionable from a guest safety and security standpoint? Is there, is there, is there too much personalization that the, a hotel can do? So maybe I'll answer that from a, a technology and data perspective as well, because you know personalization is definitely the nirvana of our industry. We want to be able to recognize guests very personally at every digital touch point and, and interaction in particular. 
So how do you avoid the pitfalls that you're discussing? Absolutely, you have to have a strong data governance and data strategy framework in place. Uh, if not for no other reason than to ensure that you've got the privacy and regulatory and security components uh, down and, and taken care of. But the other I think is also a challenge for our industry is that historically we've treated our guests as though they were siloed. You're a spa guest, you're a food and beverage guest, you're a rooms guest, and now suddenly you have different salutations, possibly different spellings of names, so on and so forth. So being able to, to normalize and standardize that data, centralize it to the extent it makes sense, uh, it is something that's quite important. Uh, and that's what we're, we're actually doing at Mandarin Oriental. We, our system is called Guest 360. So we've got that holistic view of the, the guest. Okay, that's, that's fascinating. Um, uh, do, when you when you look at the strategies associated with personalization, Monica, do do you look to vendor partners or do you hire people internally uh, or both? What what what's your best strategy? <laughs> um, so, being a relatively small company, we do tend to buy best of breed, off the shelf technology. Uh, we work with uh, a partner for integration, architecture, and design, also done by some of my team internally. But really the value here is, what are we gonna do with this? And that's the marketing strategy. What's the most important part of guest engagement and building loyalty? So it, there are a lot of moving parts and pieces to getting it right. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I'll open this question up to the group. Actually, I've got two more questions. Um, one of them is related to marketing and how you engage with, uh, with guests and, and how that engagement changes using technology. Um, uh, with the changing digital landscape, uh, and, and that includes customer trends and you know, their, their mobile first like lifestyle, uh, has, has, have things changed in the way you communicate with guests, how you reach them, and then how you engage with them when, when, you, did, when you do reach them? Have, have things changed in the last few years because of uh, technology? And you, anyone can answer this question. So I hope someone has an answer. <laughs> I think, um, Bob, it's, it's when we talk about luxury experience, for, for example, our hotels in Maldives, um, ultimately the technology has helped us, of course, to be in touch with the client the way they want to. So um, every customer who books a villa or half around the world of course, they have different expectations, but different ways of contacting us and as well um, be able to be in touch, um, expressing their wishes and their requirements in advance to us. And every customer is very different. So um, so ultimately, I think technology of from apps, from, you know, the traditional phone, um, but as well the way of how they, you know, using social media to be with us um, and to give us all the information in advance. I think that's really an important step, um, which to make sure actually the, the real experience on the resort is, is really um, seamless and the way they're really expecting it. So um, it actually technology in the end of the day, as Monica sometimes said, you know, we, we are all about um, to make the, the experience in luxury hotels a unique one. It has to be the traditional way as, as, as well. Um, you know, um, you know, that's and everyone else said it's about really the, the luxury experience going back to how it used to be and, and ultimately um, and as well what every guest is expecting from us in, as a luxury operator and luxury owner. Okay, that's great. Great. Uh, Vishal, any, any, any uh, feedback on that subject, uh, how you engage and connect with guests? Yeah, thanks, Bob. Yeah, I'd love to chime in. I think you know, the communication ties in with Mon what, what, what Monica said about personalizing that communication, you know, and I think that, you know, that the personalization of the communication, it involves two components. So one is eliciting the consumer's choice, which I think all of us are trying to do increasingly by, you know, trying to get, get data from them through surveys and through, through feedback. And, uh, but there's also the other aspect of, of personalization is the recommendation piece, you know, recommending things that maybe they haven't articulated, maybe they haven't explicitly chosen. You know, obviously Amazon has, has done this best and Netflix is doing it. And, you know, once you have more data on people, you can make recommendations that they themselves may not have anticipated. 
Um, in the wellness space, we're trying to do this. We, you know, we try and collect wellness data on our on our guests, and we try to make inferences about things that are going to be beneficial to them. Um, so I see this as a trend that's going to be increasing in in future years as we continue capturing more data on our guests. We're going to be able to make inferences about things that we think they're going to like are going to be beneficial to them, are going to help them uh, in our for for sensei help them achieve greater well-being in their life. Um, so I think that's an important component of the technology piece. It's not just about um, capturing their choices, but also you know other data points about them that we can make inferences from. Sure. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Right, thank you. Absolutely. I think the introduction of machine learning and AI into our industry is is here. Uh, there's already existing within chatbot or company websites. Recommender engines will do a far better job in some cases of presenting the right content to the right person at the right time uh, that may trigger a, a click through or a purchase. So there's, I think, some exciting innovation coming to our industry. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Monica. Thank you. Um, my last question um, today is sort of a hard question. And it really is a, a, a IT centric, system centric question, but also involves the rate of change and innovation that's occurred. Um, there was a recent study by a, a global technology company called Lumen, which was formerly CenturyLink, they recently renamed themselves, that, that spoke to the, the increased levels of threats on networks in general that have occurred since the beginning of the year. And that rate of change continues to escalate. You know, there are statistics about uh, things called DDoS attacks, which is a, a, a descriptive denial of service attack on networks that can shut networks down. Um, in April and May, there's a 31 day period of time in April of May of this year that the, uh, the, the most number of DDoS attacks ever recorded occurred in those 31 days. Um, there was a 1200% uh, increase in DDoS mitigations on the Lumen network between July and October of 2020. That's 1200% increase in mitigations. Um, and, and then alarmingly enough, and I think this was an AWS event where the largest single DDoS attack occurred, which was 0.3 terabytes per second um, earlier in the year. Um, I'm just wondering if the, the increased levels of threats in this, this, supposed, this seemingly alarming activity, do you think that that at all is stifling innovation um, in our space um, or just in the, the technology space in general? I'd love to hear your feedback and your thoughts on that. And again, this is a question for anyone, so. Well, I, I think the, the hospitality industry has been at the forefront of understanding the risks, the threats, uh, and the exposure if something happens to your data and to your guest data and colleague data in particular. So we've all made significant and substantial investments to protect the environment. The question is, is it enough? How do you balance the cost of those investments against innovation and not uh, quash the spirit and culture of innovation? So I, I think it is foundational. Nobody would bring a technology into our environment without the uh, considered approach of governance, security, et cetera, uh, data privacy. But we still want to move and progress. So we're, we're open to working with uh, startups and innovators and where they need some uh, additional support for educating them around these risks and threats, we're happy to provide that. Okay, great. Uh, Nelson, any feedback on, on that subject? Yeah, it's a, it's a challenge and you don't you don't want to not look at a, a piece of technology and innovation to bring into the hotels uh, because of some, you know, because of some uh, threat, but you do, it's always, it's always there because, uh, you know, the threats have only gotten worse. Uh, we have a whole, uh, Brookfield has a whole threat management uh, that oversees all of our real estate platforms and they've only increased in, in vigilance and uh, uh, of what's going on. Uh, ransomware is, is huge because that's more of a social engineering uh, and getting to, to the right, right folks just to make that one click and, you know, all your defenses are kind of gone from there. Uh, so it's, it's a real challenge, but you have to, uh, you have to balance it because if you just shut your doors, then we'll, we'll just be, you know, we'll be back to uh, uh, doing uh, manual check-ins like we used to 20 years ago. 
Yeah, absolutely. 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 All right. Uh, uh, Nils or uh, Vishal, any, any comments on, on that or any other topics you might want to talk about? No, I think it's 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 really um or the um, the the balance between risk management and innovation. So I think that's within Hilton and our luxury brands. That's you know literally two separate teams, right? So that's, I think that's very very important that you know you have a specific team who is dealing with the risk management and 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 ensuring that the technology is safe for our guests, our hotel, um, and our estate. So, but then a, a separate team which may be different mindset um, of really looking into the innovation of what actually the hospitality can be in the future. I think that's really, we have to separate those um, and, and really ensuring that we we, we can get the uh, really looking after for our guest um, advantage in the future and our own, town, own organization. So I think it's, that's really crucial. All right, thank you. Thank you. Michelle? Yeah, and Bob, just to chime in, I think, um, yeah, I think these threats are real and they're increasing and it's forcing us to rethink what the guest engagement looks like. Uh, Monica alluded to this before that, you know, the transactions are not simply with one property or one product or one brand. They're now extending across products, across brands. And we want to continue being a part of that seamless experience. That means that we have to break down our data silos, but still be mindful of, of data sharing and, in the wellness space, we're collecting a lot of health data. And so now we're thinking about, well, where's that point in that transactional series where we're gonna get that client, that guest consent to data sharing? And how can we make sure that that consent applies across that entire series of transactions? So I don't think we have a, an answer for you, but you know, we're considering you know, blockchain kind of technologies that make sure that the data is, is protected at each step of that transactional series. I think that allows you know, different partners in that chain of transactions to maintain the integrity of the data, but still allow sharing of data and still be able to provide that seamless experience that we want to deliver for our guests. Okay, great. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's actually, um, I'm optimistic for the future because of individuals like yourselves and the companies you work for that are constantly looking for new ways to deliver a better experience, a safer experience, and, and have the mindset to um, look at all the risks, all the uncertainty, all the fear that might exist in the, in the world today, but build for a, a much, much better tomorrow. And I think I can speak, I hope I speak for everyone here um, uh, that we're gonna be back bigger than ever, better than ever. And hospitality is going to, to be an amazing, amazing place to be here in the, in the coming months. So. Um, I'd like to thank um, each of the panelists today. Uh, this has been a great discussion, and I look forward to continuing these discussions with you in the future. And I'd like to thank the audience for your time. Um, so uh, and lastly, I'd like to thank um, ILHA, everything that they've done to help put this together. So thank you very much, and uh, we'll talk again in the future.